Hey, what's up? Welcome to the Margo Lab channel. My name is Arctic Andy, and in this video, I'll be going over some recent sea ice analysis from the National Snow and Ice Data Center covering changing ecosystem dynamics. But before I get into the analysis, make sure you subscribe to the channel to support my efforts in making climate science more accessible. And let me know what you think in the comments down below. And so this schematic uh, was included in the analysis, which I thought was really cool. I think it's a really beautiful graphic that shows a lot uh, of stuff going on, but it is kind of hard to digest. There are a lot of things going on. And so I'll, I will just point out a couple things, and then I will divide this into three parts to really break it down so we can get a better understanding of it. And so what, what we have here is that the top schematic is representing the present ecosystem dynamics of zooplankton or copepods, which are depicted here, and their diel vertical migration, this DVM or daily vertical migration. However, in the Arctic, because in the winter it's basically dark 24 hours a day, and in the summer it's basically light 24 hours a day, that vertical migration is actually more or less seasonal. It's not daily in the Arctic or not typically daily, and that's because these zooplankton, these copepods, you can think of them as little insects in the water or little shrimp, things like that, they try to avoid predation during the day, so they go down to greater depths when it's light out, and that's what you can see in the top. And so they, they hang out at depth so predators can't look up and see them and eat them. But then at night or in the polar winter, they would then go closer to the surface going to be dark so predators can't see them and then they would feed. But then in the kind of transition period of the year where there is a mix of light and dark, that's when they would begin this diel or daily vertical migration to sink to the depths for safety when it's light out and then go to the surface to feed when it's dark out. And then if we look at the bottom graph, same type of stuff going on, but this is representing the future or an expected or a predicted future. You know, no time travel was used to make this schematic. So that is an expected future based on how the environment is changing. And so if we think about this as what is the x-axis, let's just think about the x-axis being time or months where we have January on the left and December on the right. And so now getting into this, I am going to partition this into three parts beginning with the tail end of winter, beginning of the year. And so what we have looking at the present is that we've got some pretty thick sea ice, and that sea ice is enriched in biological material, whether that's algae that are alive and doing well, or maybe some detritus or, you know, things that's stuck in the ice. There's food there for these copepods, these zooplankton, to feed upon. But if we look in the expected future, there's going to be thinner ice. Because of that thinner ice, it's not multi-year ice. It's, it'll probably be first-year ice. Thinner, there's not as much biological accumulation on that underside of the ice. And so there's less food for those copepods to feed upon. And as a result of that, when the season changes and there starts to be a little bit of light out and they begin this diel vertical migration, those copepods then become predators on Calinus naupli. And so this is a nice little graph, really just the life cycle of that zooplankton, the copepod, and the naupleus is basically the juvenile stage of that copepod and its life cycle. And so because there is less food in the sea ice, it looks like these copepods, these zooplankton, are then feeding upon their young. They're participating in cannibalistic behaviors. Not good. Nobody wants that. And so that is a reflection of their um, ecosystem changing in a way that's unhealthy. But yeah, that's really, I think, you know, the, the big differences in the tail end of winter there. So now let's move on to the summer months. And what we have is in the, um, in the present ocean, the present Arctic Ocean, there's, as mentioned before, thicker sea ice. And as a result of that, when the ice gets thin enough, we get this phytoplankton bloom, uh, and that's, that's plants in the water as opposed to algae, plants, and the ice. So this, these plants in the ocean, they develop, and they, this bloom becomes so you know, thick and dense, it extends to the depths that these zooplankton, these copepods, are residing at because they're hiding from the surface, and basically they wait until what looks like around July to be able to feed on these phytoplankton, these plants in the water. And so the contrast in the 
projected future ocean is basically that because this ice gets thinner earlier, not only is there under ice bloom, but there's also a phytoplankton bloom that begins earlier in the year extends to the depth where the zooplankton are around June, and so they're able to feed then. But then moving into the winter, there is a longer food gap. There's not as mo much productivity in the water. There's not as much biology for the zooplankton, the copepods, to feed upon, which is no bueno for those copepods. And then if we continue on moving into the winter again, uh, we see that this diel vertical migration begins as we transition from light to dark. Uh, because there's this kind of enriched, thicker ice in the present ocean, those copepods are able to feed upon the ice algae there, whereas there's less food in the future ocean. And so this kind of just looks like it's this positive feedback loop in the future where there's just less and less food for these organisms to feed upon. Uh, and so that's problematic. So that's that is not good. So hopefully the way that I broke this down for you was helpful. Hopefully you enjoyed it.